Hey Transformers fans, hope you all had a great week. And today's review is going to be extra special. It's always special whenever we're taking a look at Big Red Optimus Prime. And this particular incarnation of Prime is the Jada Toys Metals Diecast 124th Scale Optimus Prime. So at first glance, this might look like a transformer that doesn't transform. It's a diecast rendition of Optimus Prime's 1984 truck form, COE Freightliner. And you might think, well, what's the point if it can't transform? But I'm gonna show you today just how I like to play around, futz around with some of my collectibles, even if the obvious play feature happens to be missing. So I've been eyeing this one for quite some time and I saw it at a local toy convention uh, last year and asked the dealer how much is it and he says hang on a second pulls out his phone and he actually went on eBay to check and see how much he was gonna charge me for it and then he named some just crazy price and I said no thanks I'll pass I'm patient and he did this thing that a lot of dealers do he said you might never see it again well I uh, just want to tell everyone out there, don't buy into that when you hear dealers try to pressure you into making a purchase like that, because this guy is now currently on sale at Big Bad Toy Store. An incredible price. And the price with shipping still comes in at less than half of what that dealer was asking for this last year, so uh, good things do come to those who wait. But uh, just a quick look, look at the box here. We've got the original G1 Optimus Prime artwork. And that is, I believe, the original artwork. Not a uh, reinterpretation or recreation of it. Nothing really on the uh, bottom other than some legal stuff. And over on the back, I love this. Right off of the original tech spec meters. The line is called Hollywood Rides and nice big windows to show you exactly what you're going to be getting. So let's open this box up. Oh, but first, before I do that, I also just wanted to mention that also available to my other favorite franchises as part of the Jada diecast line, it is the Ecto-1 124th scale. I actually don't own any um, like accurate Ectos. I've got the real Ghostbusters plastic one and a little Christmas ornament one, but this is awesome to have a die cast Ecto and I'll be taking a closer look at that in another review down the road. And also Kit, one of my favorite shows growing up with light up display on the front. Another really awesome 80s supercar. So that will be coming at you in the coming weeks and months. But Optimus Prime, 124th scale die cast and let's open the box up and he's in there nice and tight uh, so this was taped in this tab into there so you just need to cut that so that you can release Optimus so today's review I'm gonna be uh, showing you all the details in this but there's gonna be a lot of comparisons because Ever since I first saw this guy, what I really wanted to do with him was compare him, see him how he looks alongside a bunch of different Optimus Primes, because I never intended to just get this thing on its own. Uh, this to me is a is just a beautiful piece just looking at it right now in person, but it's uh, I always intended to add something to it, either a trailer, so we'll see how the different trailers uh, fit with this, and as well as having him be displayed with a robot Optimus Prime. So we're gonna take a look at how to do that. But first, like most die-cast toys, he is actually screwed in down here. So just need to get a screwdriver to release him. And these screws are rarely, really, really tight. Yeah, very easy to loosen. It's just in there as a safety precaution basically doing this one-handed. Okay, so those are loose and popping out. And Prime lifts right out nice and easy. And wow, hello gorgeous. This thing is 
spectacular. This is this is another one of those things where pictures just do not do it justice. The gleaming 80s chrome, the chrome on the uh, giant gas tanks. His tanks are so much bigger than on any of the other Optimus Prime trucks. And that's one of the advantages of not being able to transform. There's no alt mode to deal with. So this is one of the few times we've gotten a very, very accurate to real life Optimus Prime truck mode. Most of the time with masterpieces, third parties, there has to be some compromises because it needs to look good in both robot and truck mode. And a lot of the masterpiece scaled Optimus Primes do suffer in truck mode in order to make up for a good looking robot mode with things like little stubby gas tanks um, and lack of detail all over the body. He's got these handles that you would grab onto as you're rising up, getting into the truck. Wow, this is really, really impressive. The doors, I believe, open and I just want to be careful to not break anything here. I do notice that there's some plastic here, so we're going to chop that off. And let's see if we can get this door open without breaking anything or stretching anything. I do know that sometimes these won't close back in. This feels very um, delicate. So you don't want to force it too much and it doesn't look like the door opens all that much, but it does open on that side and ah, over on this side, yeah. So our door is open. It's kind of flopping open, but luckily on mine, it will close all the way. Just, I don't even know where to begin with this thing. There's so much beautiful detail on it. We've got the Autobot logo on what would be Optimus's shoulder. I just love these chrome handles. These details that we've never seen on him before. He's got some really beautiful chrome hubcaps and chrome on the back as well. This is the one part that feels really flimsy. Just uh, first impression. Um, this is very thin plastic right here. He's got a great heft to him, especially front. He is quite front heavy. And on the back, there is more plastic here. That, that is kind of a shame with all of the great detail all throughout the rest of this truck. This kind of feels like a shortcut to just paint red on a bunch of bumps instead of uh, glue on some clear red plastic. This is the trailer part where a trailer would connect. And so We'll see if some of the um, masterpiece size trailers that I have, I have two different kinds, or maybe three actually. Uh, we'll see if those are compatible with this. And it's just cool to see Optimus have this sort of design, like a realistic truck design, and instead of giant thick back section, which is totally unrealistic, but necessary for a transformation. And the back of the cab, some more beautiful chrome, the smokestacks, some more tanks on the back. That's really, really nicely done. And the smokestacks are just solid. They, uh, they aren't hollow all the way through. And the front of the cab does feel like die cast. It's cold to touch, kind of like the one ring to rule them all. And, but and it's um, painted red, it seems like. Over on the front here, we actually do have a little bit of clear plastic. That looks like clear plastic glued in where the headlights are supposed to be. And if it's not, it sure gives that illusion. But down here again, just a painted spot to represent the lights. And in order to get a better look inside, Let's flash a little bit of light in here. Let's try to open this door up. The steering wheel, we can get a better look at it from this side, is chrome. 
They've chromed the steering wheel too. That is spectacular. And let's see what other... It's hard to get a good look in there. But there does seem to be a console right in there. Front console. On the other side there is... There are seats. So... We're going to see if we can actually put some figures in here. Because he does have some seats. So I was hoping that I'd be able to fit a Headmaster Spike in this thing because it is 124th scale and the alternators and vinyl techs from years ago were 124th scale and headmasters could fit in quite a few of those guys but over here there's just no way that you're going to get a headmaster through this tiny gap so uh not not through there with the steering wheel blocking the way and not through here either so that's a no-go, but the other option is the Masterpiece Spike that came with Masterpiece Optimus Prime, the second Masterpiece Optimus Prime. So this is going to be quite a challenge, and I usually have a lot better luck doing this sort of thing off-camera, so I don't know if I'll be able to do this um, on camera. It's a little harder to see. What also makes it tricky is usually when I'm trying to fit a figure in, I go in from the other side, and you can't do that here. The uh, the front is just way too wide, and the store doesn't even open enough anyway to get your finger in or, or anything else. So if I get this guy in, I don't know how I'm going to get him out. Uh, it is... It's, it's not going all that well. So... But I am, I do want to get him in there because I don't think I've seen anyone actually successfully get a driver in here. So I'm going to have to just take a moment here and try to get him in off camera. All right, mission accomplished. That took quite a bit of finagling. And here's the secret. It is not possible, at least I, I was not able to, get him through the doors no matter how hard I tried. So, all I gotta do is remove some screws. You take the screws out, which removes the cab from the wheel portion, and then inside here, this portion just comes right out. It's not held in, tabbed in, or anything, so no danger of breaking it. So you just take them apart, and you can put pretty much any driver you want in there and now that we've opened it up a bit I can show you the details off in here a little bit better so there's the two seats there's the chrome steering wheel which you can actually have your spike grab onto from either side there's a look at the console and here's a detail I didn't even notice a little uh, little shifter or something and it's chromed too that looks great and then there's this bag portion which I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe now I can fit a headmaster in the back there. So that's how you get a driver in there, and it's just four screws. It's really not that big a deal on the bottom of the truck. And another thing I wanted to show off on the bottom of the truck, just for the people who are really missing their Optimus Prime robot mode, is... There's a nice little depiction of Prime underneath the truck with a nice silver Autobot symbol and he is all painted. So that's a nice little detail just so that you know even though it doesn't doesn't transform it still has the image of Prime in his robot mode on there. And for those who are curious you can get a Headmaster to fit in the seat I'm not sure if this will go all the way in though. Yes, it will. Oh, that's awesome. So you can even have headmasters sitting in there or another blast from the past, Optimus Prime's Power Master Engine High Q. You can transform him up and put him in the back there. And let's see. 
if that will fit as well. That one's hitting the top a little bit. So it looks like high Q and engine mode, not enough clearance uh, to sit upright, but you could pop him down like that. And now this should fit in there. Yep, that's perfect. So you can have gear or maybe put an Optimus blaster back there. That's really cool being able to have Optimus actually hauling passengers in here. But I think the drivers I'm going to go with in this guy are the uh, Dr. Wu partners who I have in this um, masterpiece or rather it's a third party KO of a masterpiece Optimus Prime. I have them in here but they look a little cramped. They're a little bit taller than the masterpiece official spike. So they, they're kind of hunched over and cramped in here. Both Spike and Spark Plug as well with their hard hats. So I think what I'm going to do is pop this masterpiece Spike in this truck, which has no steering wheel. And since he's a little bit smaller, he won't look quite as hunched over in here. So that looks a lot more proper. And we're going to take Spike and Spark Plug. We're going to let go Spark Plug drive. Not sure if I can get him to grip the wheel. Oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And another little detail I wanted to show you. This is so cool. Being able to take stuff like this apart and see details you'd probably never see. Pedals. You can actually put the feet on pedals. So I love all these little hidden details that you'd never know about. And we'll put Spike over on the other side. And I think these guys should look a little bit better in here. We just you gotta be careful putting it back in because this is the part where you can knock them over and then you're not gonna have much luck straightening them out. And lower this back down. It's, it's surprisingly easy. Sometimes doing stuff like this can be very, very, very frustrating. Moving parts, multiple separate parts, but this just perfectly fits together. And now we've got Spike and Spark Plug in Optimus Prime. And that's something I always wanted as a kid. I always wanted to have Optimus Prime be able to have Spike and Spark Plug driving him or passengers. We all know Prime is the one who's really driving. But that is so awesome. And now that we're done playing around and futzing, let's do a whole bunch of comparisons. So this is 124th scale. This guy, it's hard to say. Some people seem to think he's 132 scale or somewhere about there. This is the New Year Convoy version reissue of Optimus Prime. So Jada did do a 132 scale Optimus Prime, which is about the same size as the original G1 Optimus Prime. So if you want a non-transforming, accurate looking uh, G1 sized Optimus Prime, that one is also available. But just to show you how much bigger the Jada Toys 132 scale version is. And here is the Masterpiece Optimus Prime version 2 the uh, KO version that doesn't really stick together all that well. And these are just about the same size. It's very close, but I would say the Jada Toys version is a little bigger. Definitely a nicer red on the Jada Toys, a nice shiny cherry red. And on this one, it's, it's more of like a dull, a little bit more uh, duller red on it. Sort of long tanks here, but not as long as on the Jada Toys version. So the trailer from this guy is probably not going to work. I'm going to try it right now. And this trailer doesn't even have the, the proper type of connection point, so there's nothing to plug in here. Um, the best you could do is just rest it. 
on on this and this part feels kind of fragile it's kind of flimsy um, this trailer isn't all that heavy so I don't think you're gonna risk damaging it but it's a little on the small side it's not terrible but is certainly a little little small for the size of the cab so let's try a bigger one so here's the Jada Toys version with Masterpiece 01, the one that started the whole Masterpiece line, and these are almost exactly the same size. I would give the bulk to MP01 just because of the leg portion. He is just I mean, like a hair taller, but they are definitely almost exactly the same width, height, very, very close in size. So I think if you have this Masterpiece Optimus Prime or the oversized Wei Jiang Masterpiece Optimus Prime, that would be a much better fit. And years and years ago, this trailer came out. This was a one of the first third-party fan product I ever purchased. It was an oversized trailer, which is a little tricky to plug in, but it has a little post right here, which plugs into Masterpiece Optimus. And I love how this trailer looks on MP01. So much better than the original trailer that the Japanese version of MP01 came with. It is the perfect size. It's huge. It looks just like the original trailer spectacular and this is the trailer that i wanted to try on this diecast optimus prime so let's see if these are compatible so we're going to see if this post will fit in the hole nope the post is too big so one thing i guess i could do is try to drill this hole out. That would make the post fit in there uh, better, but it also might make the trailer drop down a little too low. Uh, even though it's not secured, man, he is long. Um, it's not secured, but I think that's the perfect height almost. It could maybe just be a tiny bit higher because it seems to be going down on an angle towards the truck and it should be just a little bit more, but that, that is beautiful. That's fantastic. So I'm like a lot of people out there without the trailer. It's not really complete. Just looks like something is missing. That Walmart reissue of Optimus Prime, sorely missing the trailer. This diecast Optimus Prime with this third party oversized trailer is just a work of art. This is absolutely beautiful, wonderful. Love how that looks. Wow. And for those who are curious, here's a trailer that was included with the Japanese version of MP01. So we're gonna move this Colossus out of here. And this trailer is a little bit shorter than that third party one. Same type of connector, little post here, which won't fit probably. No, it's it's too big, but the same idea. It can just rest on there, and that looks about. It connects the same. The trailer is going down on just a bit of an angle as well. It looks quite nice if that's a trailer you have, especially if it's a spare one that you've just had laying around. Um, it looks quite nice on him. So the, the purpose of this particular Optimus Prime, rather than just having it be a die cast truck without a trailer, a better use of it would be like this. So if you have the Takara Masterpiece 01 Optimus Prime and trailer, now you can display your trailer with a truck, a fantastic looking truck, way better than this guy is in truck mode. And then you can put this guy in robot mode, robot mode. And I think that is 
Just a beautiful display. On a shelf, having Prime both in robot and in truck mode. That's what this is all about. I don't think this is really intended to just sit by itself. The, uh, the real beauty of this comes out when it's displayed with other Optimus stuff along with it. And the Trinity isn't complete without one tough little Autobot roller. And this is from the second masterpiece, Optimus Prime. And I think that's, that's the correct scale. Roller is one tough little Autobot. He's supposed to be small. So I think this smaller roller looks proper with him. But here's the upsized Weijiang roller. And yeah, like that's that's way too big. That looks that's almost half as long as Optimus Prime. And then this trailer came with a roller as well. And he, this one was also offered on its own. Um, same mold. It's just a upsized version of the original G1 roller. Again, that's that's gigantic. That's the size of an Autobot car. So I believe that the best in terms of scale is that roller right there little guy now optimus is a bit of a mass shifter he does change size from robot to truck mode this is masterpiece optimus prime version 2 which we saw earlier when this guy transforms into a truck he's a little bit smaller than this guy so in a perfect world this would be the size of Prime in robot mode, and when this robot transformed, he would be a little bigger. He'd be this size. So, there is a little bit of mass shifting going on there, but to give you a look at Optimus with the bigger Weijiang version, this is the upsized third-party version of Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and he is a beast. He is a behemoth. So if you were to display this truck with a robot Optimus Prime, I almost feel like this robot, it still looks nice, but I think he's a little too big. This truck looks like it would transform into this robot, just because I think he becomes more com compact when he turns into a robot. When he turns into a truck, he's more spaced out and boxy. So that to me looks more like that becomes that rather than this giant thing. And another size comparison here is the oversized Weijiang Optimus Prime in truck mode with the diecast one. And this one is, he seems just a bit bigger. Here's the MP01. Show you all three of them side by side. These two are much closer in size. This one seems just a little bigger. It's probably another reason why the Weijiang, when it is in uh, robot mode, seems a little too big to be displayed next to that. Because it's the biggest of the three when you put them all side by side. And this turntable I'm using right now, this uh, Smooth Raoul, as I like to call it, it is heavy. There is a lot of heft on here, a lot of die cast metal on here right now. But for the final playing around, we're going to take the trailer, which was made for the Weijiang oversized Optimus Prime. And this is just a big version of the second masterpiece, Optimus Prime. So same type of connector. But let's see how this hooks up. I mean, it just, it, again, it doesn't hook up, but it just rests on there. And I don't know. I think it, uh, it actually might rest on there even better than... And the G1 upsized one I have, that looks really, really nice too. Especially since this is a different type of a paint job. It's it's a little more loose, moves around a little bit more than the, the G1 oversized one. But 
Uh, it's got the really nice silver, shiny paint job on it, more detail. It got the chrome on the back and the, uh, the lights, see-through plastic, clear plastic, chrome on the sides. It, it, I don't know, it almost looks like it, it goes with this ultra detailed version of Prime even better than this uh, G1 looking trailer. I always love the look of this trailer just for it, uh, you know, being the G1 version, but that is really nice looking. And the final comparison and quite possibly the most important comparison of all with world's smallest Transformers Optimus Prime. He's a little teeny tiny guy actually right on top so that is Jada Toys die cast 124th scale Optimus Prime to use an old expression he is more than meets the eye I wasn't expecting this thing to be this cool and have this many um, different display options I was hoping that he would look good with the trailers but uh, he's fantastic other than being a little bit on the loose side, I think it looks great. It's just going to sit on a shelf uh, for me. I'm not going to be moving it around and see you can't you can't haul the trailer. It'll just slide right off. But in terms of just sitting on a shelf and looking fantastic, uh, I love having an actual accurate truck mode for Prime instead of. Uh, the the big blocky legs in behind so that's what I thought let me know what you thought in the comments below big shout out to the patreon tribe thank you all for supporting the channel and if you're in a position to support the channel visit patreon.com slash Michael Mercy all sorts of different tiers and different rewards there for as little as one dollar a month and we're well over uh, 50 patreon exclusives now reviews roundtables all sorts of cool stuff going on on there. Thanks so much for watching and thanks for all the positivity. Love you guys. Feel free to share the video with your Transformers fans, friends, if you enjoyed it. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Until next time, roll out!